Hello, hello, hello. So, I'm back. Alright, today I'll be doing the Joho Pasir Gudang, Pasir Gudang set 2. Okay, so, yep, let's start. Alright, so hope you can watch until the end. Lah, okay, because I'll be showing you a lot of, you know, a lot of answering techniques and also like some shortcut and some calculator tips. Alright, so number one, which number is rounded off correctly to three significant figures? So remember, when we count significant figure, we count from left to right. So for example, 5, 3, 4. And we look at the next number, right? So from left to right, 1, 2, 3, and look at the next number. And if the next number is bigger than 5, then I have to plus 1. The third digit, I have to plus 1. Okay? But if the fourth digit is smaller than or equal, smaller than 5, then you don't have to plus 1. Right, so one is actually smaller than five, so the answer will be just be five three four zero zero. So you know A is wrong, right? A is wrong because it should be five three four zero zero. Okay, what about B? Same thing. One two three. Look at the next number. The next number is seven, and seven is bigger than five, so you actually have to plus one. So when you plus one, it becomes five five seven. And what about the the two digit left? You have to round. You have to replace with zero lah, right? So B is also wrong, right? Okay, maybe some of you will say like A. I thought if you round off three digit, uh, three digit figure, the answer would be five five seven. But if you think carefully, like it doesn't make any sense, right? Fifty five thousand six hundred seventy four. After you round off, it's only five hundred. So no, okay, it's not correct. You actually have to replace it with zero, right? Next, okay, zero yang depan ni kita tak kira. Okay, zero yang depan tak kira. So you actually you start from here. This is the first digit figure. So one, two, three. Look at the next number, which is three. Three kena plus one ke tak payah. So the answer is just zero point zero one four five. So C is also wrong, so the answer should be D la. Alright, so let's double check. 1, 2, 3. So the next number is 8. 8 kena plus 1 kan, so jadi about 0, 0.0. 245 akan jadi 246. And yeah, D is true. So D is the answer. Number 2, express this thing in standard form. Just use your calculator, okay? 0, 0.05264 divide 14. Alright, nothing special. So that's the answer. So A, B, C, D, B, alright? The other negative, right? 3.76 times 10. Power. Yeah, just equal saja. C and D confirm wrong already. Because standard form, uh, standard form, the pan decimal mesti ada satu digit saja. And the digit cannot be zero. Okay? So C and D automatic wrong already. Because C and D is not in standard form. Walaupun dia nampak macam standard form, it is not standard form. Because standard form, the pan decimal tak boleh ada dua digit macam tu. Okay? So, it should be, the answer should be B. Alright? So, yeah. Number three, it is given that 30 solid cylinder each with a radius 50 cm. So, I'll, I'll draw a cylinder. The And there is 30 tau. There's 30 cylinders. Okay, takkan lah you want me to draw 30 cylinder. I'll just draw one lah, right? So, each cylinder, the radius is 50. So, the radius is R is 50. Or else, height is 150. Alright, tinggi dia 150. And then, melted to make 40 sphere. Find the volume of one sphere. First of all, let's find volume of one cylinder first. Okay, let's take... Take it slow, alright? Let's, you know, let's, you know, take it slow, okay? Don't have to rush. So, let's find one cylinder. Pi R square H, right? The formula. So, pi they didn't say use what? So, I just use 2207 lah, okay? But you want to use 3 by 1 for 2 also can. It's up to you. But I will use 2207 times with R square, which is 50 square, and times with the height, which is 150. So, this is volume of one cylinder. So, let's tekan 22 over 7 times 50 square times 150. So, this is volume for one cylinder. But there is 30, so I should times 30. So, blah, 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 this thing. You don't even have to write it down, right? So, this vo this volume for 30 cylinders. But since they say this volume, uh, uh, this cylinder is made of metal. And they are all melted. They are all melted. So, it will become, how to say, it will become liquid. Right? It will become liquid. And then, the, all this volume is used to make 40 identical solid sphere. And find volume of each solid sphere. It means divide by 40. Lah. Because this volume... Is the volume of 40 sphere, right? So you divide 40, you will get volume of each sphere, and that will be the answer. So this is the answer. So if you look at A, B, C, D, actually there is no. Yeah, because they are all in standard form, right? The answer is in standard form. So when in standard form, what you do? You press this ENG. Tekan je, boom. So they bagi 883.9. So let's write it down 883.92857. So I will just 886 times 10 power, okay, 10 power 3 right here, it says, so 10 power 3. So, this is still not your answer, because I just mentioned, I said, standard form, in front of the decimal, can only have one digit. Sekarang, in front decimal, ada 3 digits, so you have to move the decimal, supaya the decimal is here. So, dia akan jadi 8.839286 times 10 power 1. 
So your number is getting smaller or getting bigger. Here is 800 point something. Now it's just 8 point something. Your number is obviously getting smaller, right? 800 jadi 8 point saja. 800 point something now is like 8 point something. So number is getting smaller. So if your number is getting smaller, the 10 power should get, should get what? Should get bigger, right? Because these two, so that these two things are equal, equal right? So that this is equivalent to this, right? Because if here also gets smaller, here also gets smaller, then then how, right? If one side gets smaller, here should get bigger. So you have to write plus here. Okay, plus what? Plus how many? You move two times, right? So plus two. So the answer is this. 8.83 blah, 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 times 10 power 5. So the answer should be A. Okay, why it says 8.84 here? Because you have to round off. Because it's 8.839, right? So if you want to write in two decimal place or... If you want to write in three significant figure, it should be 8.84. Yeah, so that's why the answer is A. Number four, what is the value of digit four in base 10? This is in base eight. If you want to convert to base 10, base yang lebih kecil nak jadi base 10, awak kena guna cara darab tambah, darab tambah. So if it's base eight, here will be 8 power zero, 8 power one, 8 power two, 8 power three, 8 power four, and then you darab tambah, darab tambah, darab tambah. If you want to change the whole thing to base 10. But sebenarnya dia tak nak tukar semua pun. Dia hanya nak tukar yang digit four saja. So digit four is here. So it will be 8 power zero, 8 power one, 8 power two, 8 power three. So what you need to do is just to kind 8 power 3 times 4 only. Okay, so the answer is 2048, so the answer is B. If they want you to change the whole thing to base 10, then baru you darab, darab, darab semua, and then tama tama Darab, tama darab, tama darab, tama macam tu. Alright, they just want digit 4 only. So, we don't have to change the whole thing lah. Alright, so, okay, let me open it so you can see. Alright, number 4, find the value of X. So first of all, if you want to find X, you have to pin out the 43 to the other side. So it becomes what? 64 base 8 minus 43 base 8. And you cannot use your calculator and tekan 64 minus 43. No. Because if you tekan like this, you will only get the answer in base 10. So what you do, you have to pull out 64 base 8 minus 43 base 8. So how to minus? So base 8 punya number, tol out base 8 punya number, keluar result also will be base 8. So what's 4 minus 3? 1. 6 minus 4? 2. But, and this one will be 21 base 8. Okay, 21 base 8. So, the 21 base 8, I still have to convert jadi base 5. Because, can you see, okay, 64 base 8 minus 4 is 21 base 8. But, the the x is in base 5. So, you have to convert to base 5. How to change from base 8 to base 5? Tak shortcut lah. Base 8 to base 5, there's no, how to say, tak ada cara yang cepat. Like, the only way is to change it to base 10 first, and then change it back to base 5. So, how to change from base 8 to base 10? You take 21, and then what you do? Base yang 8 to 10. Base 8 to base 10. So, kecil to besar. Means they have to darab tambah lah. So, 8 power 0 here, 8 power 1 here. So, what's 8 power 1 times 2? 8 times 2 is 16. Plus with 8 power 0 times 1, is 1 times 1 lah. Because 8 power 0 is 1, right? So, what is 8 times 2? 16. What is 1 times 1? 1. So, it's 17. But 17 is in base 10. I want base 5. So, sekarang terbalik lah. Tadi you darab tambah. Sekarang you divide. Because you are changing from base 10 to base 5. Means base yang... The, big, the base 10 to a smaller base. So, you want to change to a smaller base, you have to divide, divide by 5 lah because you want base 5. 5 times what is 17? 5 times 4 is 20, but you cannot. You have to choose the one yang smaller. So, and you write down the remainder at the side. If you write 4 here, then, macam mana? Okay, tak boleh, okay? So, you have to write 3. 5 times 3 is 15. And 15 nak jadi 17 means remainder 2. And then, 5 times 0 is 0. 0 nak jadi 3. So, the remainder is 3. And remember, baca from bawah ke atas. So, it's 3, 2, base 5. So, the answer is C. Number 6, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, minus 1, 0, 1, 1. You can do it with calculator also. Okay, actually this kind of question. But, I will not do it in calculator. I will only do it like the traditional way. Alright? So, how to minus? 1 minus 1, 0. 1 minus 1, 0. 1 minus 0, 1. Right? Okay, 0 minus 1, you cannot minus. So, you have to pinjam with the 0 here. But, 0 macam mana nak pinjam? So, actually, you have to pinjam... 1, jadi 0, pinjam 2 to here first. And then, baru from 2, jadi 1, baru pinjam 2 here. Okay, ini maksud dia. So, remember, every time you pinjam, you pinjam 2. Alright? Let me explain again. So, you understand it better. So, 1, 0, 0. Okay, 0 minus 1 tak boleh kan? You pinjam dengan 0. Tapi, 0, 0 means tak ada value, right? So, it means you cannot pinjam from here. Okay, so, actually, what you need to do is you have to pinjam from the... Pinjam lagi from 1 here. And when you pinjam, you cannot terus skip and then terus skip skip, skip macam tu tak boleh it means 0 you have to pinjam 2 to here first and then baru sekarang dia sudah ada value sekarang baru you, you pinjam so 2 akan jadi 1 and then you pinjam 2 
2 to the 0. So it will become 2 minus 1, 1, and then here is 1. So this is the answer. So the answer is A. Alright, number 7. In diagram 7, J, K, J, K, P, Q, S is a regular pentagon. So, look at this word, regular, regular. So, it means that all the angles will be 108, 108, 108, 108, 108. Okay, how I know? Because I already memorized it. Okay, I already memorized it. I already know regular pentagon, the interior angles will be 108. Okay, if you haven't memorized it yet, just use the formula. N minus 2 times 180. The N will be number of sides, so there's 5 sides. So 5 minus 2 and then times 180. So you get 540, right? But the 540 is the sum of interior angles. Okay, and then you divide by 5. Hey, can you tell me why it's Can you tell me why it's Because it's regular. Okay, because it's regular. It means that all sides, same length. So, kalau semua side sama panjang, maksudnya semua sudut pun kena sama lah. Semua angle pun kena sama. That's why you can divide by 5. Okay, what else? KLTRUP is an irregular. Ah, yang ni awak tak boleh bahagi N. Yang ni awak tak boleh bahagi N. Sebab dia irregular. Kalau irregular, maksudnya tak sama panjang. Kalau tak sama panjang, maksudnya sudut dia takkan sama. So, you cannot divide. So, hexagon. Kalau hexagon, dia punya sum of interior angle is 720. Because I already memorized it. I already memorized it. That's, how, that's why I know. Okay. Macam mana datangnya 720? N minus 2 times 180. And kali ni N masuk 6. So, 6 tolak 2, 4. 4 darab 180, 720. But the 720, you cannot divide by 6 this time. Yang tadi ini boleh. Sebab yang ni regular pentagon. Tapi ini bukan regular hexagon. So, you cannot divide by 6. Okay. But if you divide by 6, you get 120. But 120 is when it's a regular hexagon. So, maksudnya you tak boleh bahagi. But, we but the 720 is still the sum of interior angles of all the all the sudut inside. Okay? So, but you cannot ambil 120, 120, 120 lah because it's irregular. Okay, JKL is a straight line calculate value of x plus y. We already know x is 108. So, how to find y? So, we already know the sum of interior, interior, interior angles in a hexagon is 720. So, what I can do is I find all these angles here. I find this, I find this, I find this, I find this, I find this. And then I take 720 minus all this. And then yang balance is Y lah. So how to find here? 180 minus 108 because it's a straight line, right? So 180 minus 108 will be 72. So here's 72. What about P here? Okay, one circle is 360. When you tolak, tolak, dapat lah P. So 360 minus 108, then minus 105. So 147. So here's 147. Okay, here they already give you 65. So you don't have to find anymore. What about here? Here will be 360 minus 95. Just tekan lah. 265. Okay, the last part is here. So, sini dia tak bagi, ya. Okay. Walaupun dia tak bagi, tapi boleh cari. Nampak tak dia ada bagi, like, arrow here. Apa ini arrow? Ini arrow masa apa? Parallel lah, betul. Parallel. So, parallel, parallel. And they say here is 95. Sebenarnya, kalau sini 95, sini akan jadi 95 also. Okay? Okay. Kenapa? Alright, tengok sini, ya. Uh, okay, how should I explain this? Zack lah. Zack, Zack, Zack. Okay, I know it doesn't look like Zack. Usually, Zack is like this. Right? Zack is like this. But you can imagine, uh, if I tarik lines ini, yang lines ini, I tarik in this direction, and lines ini, I tarik in this direction. It means I tarik, tarik. So, when I tarik, when I tarik these two lines, it will become like this. Betul? Maksudnya, the sudut je and the sudut je will be the same. Ah, uh, Sebab tu, sini 95, sini 95. Okay, now can I find why? Yes. I just take 540 minus, 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 minus. Alright? So, 540... Minus 72, oh, not 540, sorry, 720, because it's a hexagon. Hexagon, the sum of interior angle is 720, sorry. Minus 72, minus 147, minus 65, 65, minus 265, and then minus the last one is 95. So it's 76, but it's not the answer yet, huh? it's just the value of y. They want x plus y, it means you have to take 76, plus with x, which is 108. Okay, you already find x just now, right? It's 108, so the answer should be C, alright? So, hope you understand. Okay, next is number 8, right? Number 8. So, number 8 is what? Diagram 2 shows a regular hexagon. You see the word again, regular hexagon. So, kalau you malas, tengok je lah sini. Sum of interior angle and 720. But this time, it's a regular. So, you can actually take 720 divided by 6. Because it's regular. Regular means sama panjang. Sama panjang means semua sudut pun kena sama. So, it will be 120, 120, 120, 120. So, 120, 120, 120, 120. Sebenarnya, awak tak perlu tulis semua, actually, okay? Okay, but I, I tulis semua lah. Okay, PQRSTU is an incomplete regular polygon. Oh, rupa-rupanya PQRS... Eh? 
Oh no no no. Okay okay. The PQRSTU is a regular hexagon, and then the incomplete regular polygon is BUTW. Okay, Yang Ni is an incomplete regular polygon, but we we have some information here which is it's it's a regular. It means this is also regular, but we don't know how many side, right? We don't know how many side. It can be. Uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, we don't know. But we know that it's a regular. Okay, we know that some to the same, but it's okay. Determine number of sides of the incomplete regular polygon. So how to find this? Uh, how to find how many sides here? Okay, actually, we can find out what is the angle here, right? Because if you take 360, minus 90, minus 120, right? So it's 150. So 150, the answer should be... Uh, so because we know the formula for... Sum of interior angle is n minus 2 times 180. Okay? And then, if it's a regular, we can divide by n. But we already know the, the interior angle is 150, right? And they want you to know how many sides. So, we just must use this formula. Lah. So, 180, darab masuk, darab masuk. And then, you will find n. Because n, n means the number of sides. Lah. How much is it? Alright, 180 times n is 180n. 180 times 2 is 360. Don't forget the minus, ah. Don't forget the negative. Equals to 150 times n is 150n. Okay, yang ada n dengan yang ada n boleh buat. 180 minus 150 is 30n. Negative 360 pindah jadi 360. So, n is 12. It means there's 12 side. It means if you draw, 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 ada 12 side. Okay? Uh, yeah. Alright, hope you understand. Sama je process dia. It's just that you cari balik. Okay? Like, usually they tell you, like, whether it's a hexagon or pentagon. It means they give you the number of side. And then you have to find the, the each angle, okay, each angle inside the regular polygon. But this time you cari in reverse. They bagi the angle inside, right? They bagi the angle angle inside, but they didn't tell you how many number of sides. Right? Because it's incomplete, they didn't draw like they only draw, uh, a small part of the shape, and you have to find number of sides. So you, you still use the same formula. It's just that you're, you you you. Cari in reverse, alright? So, number 9, in diagram 3, PK and PM are tangent. Hey, remember, kalau ada dua tangent, uh, automatic, they will be the same length one, okay? Two tangent, if they intersect at the same point, they will automatically will be same length. So, you already know this is isosceles. So, 180 minus 70 divided by 2 to find the angle. To find the angle at the bucu lah. So, it's 55, 55. Okay? Remember the rule you learn about. Like, if they give you two tangent, doesn't matter, mana lah. Okay? As long as it's two tangent and intersect at the point, they must see some panjang, alright? And also the angle opposite, ah, okay, the tangent point tarik radius, the tangent point tarik radius, and then the angle here and the angle here add together will be 360. Okay, 360. But I don't think we will, we will be using the here, ah, because they're ta tarik to center also. So, yeah. Okay, let's keep reading. KN is a diameter of circle. Okay, KN is diameter. It means that KN will pass through the center. So, let's just... Use a point and call it O and assume that that is the center. Okay, find value of X. So, it's such a information. Okay, if this is the center, maksudnya center tarik tangent berapa angle dia? Center tarik tangent mesti 90, betul? So, kalau sini 90, bolehlah saya cari angle sini. 90 minus 55. Agree? So, 90 minus 55 is 35. So, it means here is 35. And, you masih ingat tak? Kalau diameter, tarik, tarik to the corner, it will be 90. Tak kira lah, tarik sini pun sama. 90. Kalau tarik sini, 90. Tarik sini, 90. As long as you tarik to the to the corner, I mean to the circumference, then it will be 90 degree. So actually here will be 90 degree because can you see this is the diameter and then from K tarik to M and N tarik to M. And M is on the circumference. So here should be 90. So boleh lah cari X. 180 minus 90 minus 35. Okay, 55. You, you need to, how to say, you need to know about those circle rules and it has to be come it has to how to say you have to do so many exercises that it comes naturally okay like for example these kind of things uh, if you already forgot right if you already forgot this rule hey kenapa sini 90 kenapa then I suggest you take out your book and start doing the exercise okay like the, those exercises that I gave you last year okay and try to revise balik all those rules other 2 plus I think like 1, 2, I, I tak ingat lah 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 Tigerblast, I think. There is 13, how to say, 13 different concepts in circle that you need to learn. Okay? 13. Okay? But out of all the 13, only 4 or 3 or 4 of it yang melibatkan tangent. Okay? Uh, yeah. Number 19. Uh, number 19 pula. Number 10. <laughs> 
Diagram for shows an irreg- irregular, irregular maksudnya apa? Tak sama panjang. Eh? Drawn on a square grid, Q is an object that's an image, scale factor 1 over 2. Scale factor 1 over 2 means what? It means that your image is actually getting smaller. Okay, itu maksudnya. Q is an object, so this is object, I should label it, I call it O. So choose the right image for Q. So which one is... So 1 over 2 means your image should be smaller. So which one will be smaller? So the answer is T. Lah. I'll just tell you the answer is T. Uh, the T, T means B, lah. B is your answer, right? Why? Why is the answer is B? Because the, if the scale factor 1 or 2 means the, how to say, your, your image is getting smaller, lah. okay? So if you count here, it's the other 2 unit. So it's the 1 unit. And then it's the other 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 unit. And when you kecilkan 2 kali ganda means 6 divided by 2 should be 3 unit. So betul lah, 1, 2, 3 unit. Okay, and then here also 1, 2, 3, 4, and then when you kecilkan 2 kali ganda, jadi 2 unit. So, this will be the correct image for T. U confirms salah. Okay, U is like not out of the question already. Like, it's like, tak bad tengok already. Okay, maybe some of you ask, eh, hey, why not S? Ah? S is also same, same, ah? is also same. Okay, V also same. Ah? Why, why, why you choose T only? Why not choose S and V? Listen here. Enlargement, there's only three types. I mean, I mean the scale factor, other tiga saja jenis yang disukutannya. One is the normal one. Is when the scale factor is positive, right? Which is when, uh, okay, I should write positive integer, positive integer, positive integer. For example, it's like two, three, five, macam like two. And then the second genus is like when the scale factor is fraction, fraction, okay, fraction. It's like one over the two, one over five, and so on. And the the last one will be negative integer. Negative integer. Okay? So negative integer will be what? It's like negative 3, negative 4, and something like that. Alright? Okay, what about negative fraction? Okay, negative fraction, I tak pernah tengok lah, but... Yeah, I tak pernah tengok, but... I guess if that comes out means... I mean, I guess that would be the most... How to say? It, it will be like a soalan kebat lah. If, but... Tak ada lah, actually. But so far, I do so many set. Tak ada, neg- uh, tak ada sk- yang keluar scale factor negative fraction. Okay? It's only either positive integer fraction or negative integer. So, when positive integer means what? Your image get bigger. Okay? Your image get bigger. When the scale factor is fraction means what? Your image is getting smaller. What about negative? What what's, what what if your scale factor... Okay, yang ni still positive, ah, please. Ah. Positive fraction. Ah, positive. So, let me repeat again. Sorry. So, when scale factor is positive integer your image get bigger. When your scale factor is positive fraction, your image gets smaller. Your image gets smaller. Huh? Positive fraction smaller. And then, but if it's a negative integer, like negative 3, negative 4, what will happen to your image? Your image will be inverted. Okay, inverted. Ataupun terbalik. Okay, terbalik. It means that, if the scale factor is positive, it won't be terbalik. It will look exactly the same. Okay, like for example, like, like this thing here, it will look like this also. That's why it cannot be S and V. Because S and V, uh, yeah, yeah, it, it won't be S and V. Okay? S and V is, won't be the answer. Alright? So, um, yeah. It means, it means that, how to say, the orientation, okay? For, if the scale factor is positive, the orientation should be the same. Orientation, fix, fix orientation. Ataupun, Orientation dia akan kekal. Maksudnya, orientation means what? Like how how the shape looks like lah. If you look at S and V, the orientation change already. Alright? It means that when scale factor positive, okay, fixed orientation. But when scale factor negative, it will be inverted. Terbalik. It will be exact. Uh, like, the whole thing will terbalik. Right? The whole thing will terbalik. Uh, yep. Okay, hope you understand lah. Okay, number 11. Diagram 5 shows 5 pentagon drawn on a square grid. Which of the following is a true statement? So, we know that this is they are asking which one is true, right? So, it's better if you just look at the answer, okay? If you don't look at the answer, do, uh, like, you cannot do it, okay? You you really cannot do it. I'm, I'm not even joking. Like, if you don't look at the answer while, while while doing the question, like, you cannot do it at all. What you need to do is you have to terus baca the jawapan. So, A, object J, image L. It means object means the starting, image the, is the ending. And then they say it's a rotation 90, clockwise center O. But if you look at all of it, it's like center O, center O, center O. So, all the... All the choice you have, uh, all the, all the option, uh, is all rotation. It's all rotation and it's all center O. But only the 
but I guess the direction is like not the same. Lah. Some is like clockwise, anticlockwise. So I will draw a cross at O so that it's easy for me to see whether it's clockwise or anticlockwise. So from J to L is 90 degree clockwise. Is it correct? From J to L. From J to L should be 90 degree anticlockwise. This is lawan arah jam. So A is wrong. Alright? But if you want to clockwise also can. But if it's, it's clockwise, it will be 90, 180, 270. So it should be 270 clockwise. Ataupun 90 anticlockwise. So, but they say it's 90 clockwise, so it's definitely wrong. Okay, so it is wrong. Okay, what about B? From L to K is 90 clockwise. So, from L to K. So, let's erase this. Where is L to K? L to K is like this. So, it should be 90. What is this? What is this direction? This is anti-clockwise, right? Lawan ara jam. Jam is like this, by the way. Okay. 12, 3, 6, 9. This is how jam jalan. Okay, and it's this direction. So this is clockwise. Like this is anti-clockwise. So, from L to K, they say 90 clockwise. Is it true? L to K like this. So like this. So it means it's like this. Right? Anti-clockwise. So B is wrong. Because it should be anti-clockwise. M to K. M to K is like this here. So this should be what? Like this. Like this. So M to K, right? So it's like Cassini, like this. So like this means it's a clockwise, right? Clockwise. So clockwise wrong because they say anti here it should be clockwise so the answer should be d but let's double check from m to j is 90 anti-clockwise is it correct m to j so m to j is this one so if it's like this means it should be anti-clockwise so 90 anti-clockwise so yeah the answer is d all right i don't know what to explain la. like there's nothing to explain actually you just need to understand which direction is clockwise and which direction is anti-clockwise it's really that's all all right and if you don't know what what is clockwise and what is anti-clockwise just remember clockwise means you equal arajam, anti-clockwise means lawan arajam. Alright, so next, let's move on. Which graph represents y equals tangent x? Okay, it's quite simple because tangent x graph, this is how tangent graph looks like. So dotted line there, ada dekat mana? 90 and 270. And here will be 180, here will be 360, here will be 0. Dia akan naik, and then, eh, uh, 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 ni. But all the option here, A, B, C, D, which one is the correct one? B and D don't have to tengok lah. B and D confirm salah already. Like, look at the angle here. Like, here should be 0, bro. Like, how can it be 90? So, confirm wrong already lah. This one, no need, no need C already. So, it's either A or C. Right? So, A lah. Because they're gonna naik dulu. Okay? This one also, there's nothing else to teach. You just have to remember. You just have to be really familiar with how the sine graph, cos graph, tangent graph looks like. Okay? If you're not familiar, then you can't answer. Alright, you have to, you have to, you have to, how to say, memorize it lah. You have to memorize how the graph looks like. Number 13, in diagram 6, STV is a right angle triangle. U is the midpoint. So, I will immediately put this, how to say, use this uh, to label it. So that I know that there's some panjang. SU is 25. Okay, tulis lah, 25. And then, cos X is negative 4 or 5. Ignore the negative. Ignore the negative. The negative is just trying to tell you that it's not in quadrant 4. Because it's like add sugar to coffee, right? So, you know, if cost positive, it should be quadrant A and quadrant C. So, they say cost negative. That, like, they are just trying to tell you that it's not quadrant 1 and not quadrant 4. But, tak penting lah. Just ignore the negative for me, right? So, if cost X is negative 4 or 5, means X is here. Can you see it's a obtuse angle? It means that it's in second quadrant already. Uh, sebab tu, dia ada negative. But the negative is tak apa. Biar saja. Okay, we still ambil angle towards X and then we take out the adjacent. So the adjacent is here. I bullet can. And then the hypotenuse is 5. I bullet can. Okay, okay, let me tell you why I bullet can. Because, uh, can you see that cos is adjacent or hypotenuse? Walaupun X ni dekat luar sini, but you can take out sini punya. You can use the angle towards X. Alright? Tak kira dia pusing berapa pun, how many quadrant, you always take angle towards X. Right? So this is angle towards X. And the adjacent is 4. The hypotenuse is 5. But, how can this be 5? They just mentioned that this is 25. Maksudnya apa? Maksudnya, this is the ratio. It's not the length. This is the ratio. Maksudnya, ratio 5 is equivalent to 25. That's why I bulatkan. Okay, what about ratio 4? Okay, 5 nak jadi 25, kena darab 2 kan? So, 4, it means, kalau nak convert from ratio to length, I have to times 2. So, 4 also I have times 2 lah. So, it's 8. It means that here will be 8 cm. And then, you can actually erase the Erase the ratio already because I already know here is 8. And here will be 8 also because they mentioned U is the midpoint. So, sama panjang 8, sini sama panjang 8. Find the length of TV. 
TV is the whole thing, so 8 plus 8 is 16. Wait, did I do it correctly? Okay, sorry. 5 to 25, I have to times 5, right? Just now what I said, uh, I said times 2. Uh. I, uh, sorry, sorry. Okay, 5 times 5, 25. Messenger ratio nak jadi length kena times 5. So, 4 nak jadi... The ratio 4 nak jadi length, saya kena times 5. So, 4 times 5 is 20. So, it should be uh, 20 here. And here also will be 20 because they are the same length. So, 20 plus 30 is 40. So, okay, sorry, I made a small mistake here. A uh, small mistake just now. I said 5. Yeah, 5 to 25 have to times 5. Not times 2 lah, okay? I don't know why I said times 2, okay? So, yeah. Alright, next continue. Number 14. Diagram 7 shows a right prism with an equilateral triangular base. Equilateral means all the side is the same length, huh? same length. UTS is placed on the horizontal. A spoon is put inside the prism as shown in diagram. Okay, just like this diagram. M and N are the midpoint of QR and US. So, M and N is the midpoint. So, name the angle between the spoon and the base. So, the base is here. Yang bawah sini. So, the angle will be PNT lah. PNT. Ataupun TNP. Boleh juga. So, the answer is C. Alright. For those yang tak tahu macam mana dapat P, uh, like you cannot, you don't know why, why is it C, right? For those yang tak tahu kenapa jawapan dia C, Okay, tapa. You can use the uh, technique, right? You can use the answering technique. So what? How to how to use the technique? So, yang ni bukan yang ni is actually this is soalan jenis line and angle, right? Line and angle It's not line and angle, but line and plane, line and plane. Okay, line and plane. Because PN, can you see is a line, and then with the base, right? And the base will be TUS. But if you look carefully, it's not just TUS. There's a missing point which is N. So this is how you do it. And what you do? You look case, look case, look case, look case. Here will be bulat, here will be bulat and pangka, here will be pangka. And what you do? PN, right? So just bulatkan P, bulatkan N. TUSN, you pangka. It means for the for the line you bulatkan, for the plane you pangka. So TUSN. Yang depan is for you to write yang bulat. Yang tengah is for you to write yang ada bulat and pangka. Yang the last one is for you to write yang pangka only. So yang bulat only, which one is the yang bulat only? P lah. N tak boleh ya. N is like bulat and pangkat already. Like you have to, can, you can only write yang bulat saja. So, yang tengah is what? Yang tengah is for yang, yang ada bulat and yang ada pangkat. So, it's like N only lah. N only, N only. Okay, what about yang the last one is like for you to write yang ada pangkat. Yang ada pangkat saja. So, yang ada pangkat saja is T, U and S. So, T, U and S. So, ada tiga. So, which one is the correct one? You compare with the first one. You tengok dari P and then you choose the shortest one. P, T, P, U, P, S. Which one is the shortest? P, U, P, T or P, S. P, U, P, T or P, S. T, right? T. Because T is vertically above. So, that will definitely be the shortest one. Why not P, U and P, S? Because P, U and P, S is exactly the same length. P, U and P, S is exactly... And P, U is a hypotenuse. If you target P, U, uh, it look, here is 90 degree and this will be the hypotenuse. So, that will definitely... You know, hypotenuse is definitely not the shortest one. So, it's PT. So, this is the answer, PNT. But if you look at ABCD, it's other PNT. Pun. So, PNT, actually, you can also write it TNP like this. So, the answer is C. Alright? Just make sure the, how to say, yang tengah-tengah is the same, right? So, PNT and TNP, they are the same. 15, diagram A shows a cross-section of a water tank. Given that the angle of elevation of K from M, angle of elevation means look up from where? From M, from M, from M to K. So, M is here. So, this is the horizontal line, and then naik berapa? 50 degree, 12 minute. So you can see the right angle already. Here is M, here is 50 degree, 12 minute. Here is K, here is N, here is 1.62. Calculate the depth of water. It means fine here lah. So what you use? Tangent lah. Because angle opposite is O, and then 90 opposite is H, and this will be the A. But now they give you A, nak cari O. So nak cari O, and then bagi A. So O ah, when the question involves O and A, what you need to use? Sine, cos, or tangent. Tangent, right? Toa, right? So, tangent 50 degree, 12 minute equals to opposite is X. Adjacent is 1.62. So, how to find X? 1.62 times tangent 50 degree, 12 minute. So, 1.62 times tangent 50 degree, 12 minute. So, it's like 1.94, blah, blah, blah. So, D. Okay, uh, number 16. Okay, soalan ni best. Okay, soalan ni best. So, soalan ni, you... This soalan soalan ni ah like when I first do it, I actually how to say I actually skip this question. Okay, when I do this question, do this set. Okay, I do until fifteen. I do until sixteen. And lepas I baca the soalan, I how to say, at first I cannot do it, right? But after reading it like for a few times, and then only I found out that oh, rupanya kena buat macam tu because soalan ni 
Okay, it's challenging a little bit. Okay, like a challenge. How to say? The other test you punya uh, thinking, right? It's all about thinking. So, uh, let's do it together. Diagram 9 shows a boy standing on a horizontal stage. The angle of depression means looking down. Of R from his eye level when he's at P and Q is 61 and 29. So, he's standing here. And from his eyes, look down to R is 29 degree. But when he is at P, when he is at P, the angle is 61 when he look down to R. So calculate the distance of PQ. So actually what I will do is, you can form two different right angle triangle. You can form two different right angle triangle. So the first one, let's draw the 61 first. So 61 is what? Is when he is at P. So when he is at P means when he is here. So let's draw the first right angle triangle. So the first right angle triangle looks like this. This will be R, right? R. And R to here, the distance is 5 meter. And the P is not here though. P is not here now. P is like here now. Because uh, the stage has a height. So it's actually like this. Okay? Like his, this is the stage. And then he's standing on top of the stage. And then this is where... This is his eyes. Uh, in, this is the eye level. Right? And the angle here will be... So R from P is what? 61. So here will be 61 also. Can you understand? Because it's like, they say what? The angle of depression of R from his eye level when he's at P is 61. So betul lah. When he's at P, the angle of depression is 61. So, zag, 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 here also 61. So, what we can do, we can use tangent to find out what is the length here. Right? So, what's tangent 61? Opposite over adjacent. So, what's the opposite? The opposite will be, we don't we want to find. Lah, and then the adjacent will be 5. So, opposite will be tangent 61 times 5. So, let's tekan. 9.0202, right? 9.0202. So, this, this is the height of what? It's not height of the... It's not the height of the boy, you know. It's the height of the boy plus with the height of the stage. You find what I'm Because it's not just the boy now. Because when you're standing at P, uh, you're standing at a stage. And the R is like not not the, not the at the same level. It's like R is lower. That is why the 9.0202 is a height of the man or, or, or the boy, the height of the boy plus with the height of the stage, right? And then... Remember, they also say the angle of depression of R from Q is 29. So, you can form another tri right angle triangle. And the other triangle, the other right angle triangle will be what? Here is still R, but here will not be Q, uh, will not be P anymore. It will be Q. and Because they say angle of depression of R from Q is 29. So, from Q. But Q is not here. Huh? Look carefully. Q is not here. Q is actually, like, a little bit here. Because Q, point Q is also like, when he is standing on a stage. So, it's like like this and then the height here. Uh, macam tu. And then the angle of depression is what? 29. Okay? Let me repeat again. Angle of depression of R from eye level when he is at Q is 29. So, here also 29. Lah. So, this will be point Q. Sini. Okay? Can you see point Q and point R? They are not at the same level. Like, R is lower. Q is like, how to say, like tinggi sikit. That's why Q, I cannot write here as Q. Here will be my Q. Because other, this is the stage, right? So, they cannot tinggi sikit. Alright, and what would be the distance here to here? What would be the distance from R to Q? It will be 5 plus PQ, right? So, I should write 5 plus PQ here. And what would be the height here? Okay, I already have it, right? It's 9.0202. Because I know the height of the boy plus with the height of the stage is 9.0202. So, here will be 9.0202. Okay, uh... And then the, the, how to say, here will be 5 plus PQ. Okay, if if you forgot the plus 5, uh, then the answer will be wrong. Okay, if you forgot to plus 5, you, if you just write uh, PQ here, the answer will be wrong. It has to be 5 plus PQ because you're using the big right angle. So, and then what you do is, use tangent also. Because, uh, surah bagi opposite and then nak cari adjacent, right? Because I want to find PQ. So, opposite adjacent, tangent. So, tangent 29 equals to 9.0202 over 5 plus PQ. Actually, this one you can tukar tempat, right? Bahagi jadi darab, darab jadi bahagi. So, it becomes 5 plus PQ equals to the tangent 29 you already tukar tempat jadi bahagi. So, it will be 9.0202 divide tangent 29. So, just tekan divide. So, it's like 16.27. But you don't go and bulatkan C, ah. No, no, no. 16.27 is you have to minus 5. Baru dapat the length of PQ. So, you have to tolak 5. So, the answer is not C. It's B, 11.27. Alright, next, number 17. John Mary Lauren... Oh, how to... How to... How to pronounce this? Okay, I, oh, okay. It's actually Lawrence lah, Lauren. 
Okay. Uh, because I checked with the Malay version, right? This is Lawrence, okay? So here, there should be a space here. Lah. Okay, John, Mary, Lawrence are three students stand on a horizontal ground, okay? Lawrence lies due north. Okay, this is bearing. Lah. This is definitely bearing, okay? This is definitely bearing. So, untuk soalan jenis bearing, usually they will give you diagram, usually. But sometimes, they tak bagi diagram. Like this one, they tak bagi diagram. So what, what, what I do? I draw my own diagram. Lah. You have to draw, you have to draw, okay? Like, if you tak do case, ah, for this question, you cannot do. It's very easy to make mistake one if you want to do it without drawing diagram. So let's draw. Lawrence lies due north of Mary. So let's assume Mary is here. Maksudnya apa? Lawrence lies due north of Mary. It means what? It means Lawrence terletak di arah utara Mary. It means the north of Mary will point towards Lawrence. So just draw it like this. Okay. Okay. So... So it will be like somewhere here. Ah. Here will be the Lawrence. Ah. Okay. And the north of Mary. The north of Mary is like up here like this. So where will be the north of Lawrence? It will be up also. Okay. It will be facing the same direction also. Yeah. So here will be the north. Here will be the north. Right. So. Okay. So far this is our diagram. Okay. Maybe some of you will say. Hey. What if I draw my. 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 Mary here. And I draw my Lawrence here. Can ah? Okay. Can also. Ah. Then your north will be like this. Ah. Can also, can also, boleh, 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 right? Okay, boleh, okay, tak salah. Okay, the bearing of John from Lawrence is 216. John from Lawrence is 216. So, let's draw a cross at Lawrence. Okay, draw a cross like this. So, John from Lawrence is 216. So, 90, 180, 270, eh, eh, 270 already, they say 216 only. So, it should be like here. Can you understand? Here, here, stop here, and here is 216. And here will be John. Okay, because they say bearing of John from Lawrence is 216. So, John will be here. But, berapa panjang, right? It can it can be here, it can be here, it can be here, right? Like, berapa panjang you nak lukis. Okay, tak apa. Let's just assume that it's here first, John, right? So, the bearing of uh, John from Lawrence is 216. Means here. Uh, in, in, it's like in this quadrant lah. In this quadrant. Right, and then what else? The bearing of John, John from Mary is 258. John from Mary is 258. So here is Mary. So let's draw a cross. And then 258. So 90, 180. Here is 270 already. So it should be somewhere here. So this should where this should be the Okay, sorry. So this should be the This should be like uh the This should be where the John. It means what? It means the John you actually can panjangkan. You don't go and erase the angle. The angle betul dah. It's just that you have to panjangkan. So that is like at the same time at the at two five eight here. So here here is like John, like this. Okay, all right, yeah. So this is how it's like this is like a little bit kurang macam mana diagram dia. Okay, the last part of the question: find the bearing of Mary from John. So let's look at John. The north also same direction lah, pointing upwards. So Mary from John. So you'll be here lah, right? Because you're pushing from north and you're pushing clockwise, right? But you don't pushing sampai sini saja. This is Lawrence. You have to pushing sampai jumpa Mary. And Mary is this line. So, here. Okay, how to find the angle here? Okay, let's draw a cross. So, you can definitely see this angle here will be 90 degree. 90 degree is the whole thing, right? Tolak dengan angle yang sini. Yang kecil sini. But how to find the angle here? Zack, zack, zack. Nampak? Zack, zack, zack. And can I find the angle here? Yes. Because I know here is 270. 270. And if I take 270 minus 258, dapat lah angle. Yang kecil tu. So, 270 minus 258 is... Oh, lama. I took it. <laughs> Sorry. Minus... Okay, so it's 12. But 12 is not the answer. 12 is just the angle yang kecil sini. And then, zack, zack, zack. Means here is 12 lah. But 12 is not the answer. Because you want to find yang atas sini balance. So, you have to take 90 minus 12. 78. Okay, 90 minus answer. Right, so the answer is B. Okay, number 18 in diagram 10, N is the North Pole, S is the South Pole, and NOS is the axis of Earth. Alright, so they give you an Earth here. Alright, so P is 75 North, 158 East is a city on Earth. Which of the following represents city P? So which one is city P? So which one is 75 North, 158 East? Confirm bukan A, confirm bukan D lah. Right, because A, the latitude is at Equator. It means A is the latitude will be zero. 
And D will D is like Bawa equator already. So this latitude confirms south already. And they say P is should be 75 now. So confirm bukan A, bukan D. So it's either B or C. And can you see B and C? They are at the same latitude, which is 75 north. Okay, how how to confirm that? Look at here, zero equator, right? Here is zero, right? Nine seventy five. So both B and C is is betul lah latitude dia. Okay, both B and C latitude dia is bo both the both their latitude is seventy five north. So now what we do? We look at the longitude lah. So the longitude should be one five eight east. So which one is one five eight east? B or C? B or C? So actually the answer is C. Why? Look carefully. Greenwich Meridian. This is long Greenwich Meridian means B the the binyan longitude will be zero. It means the B, the point B, the position, the location of B will be at seventy five north, and then zero degree, because the binyan longitude is at Greenwich Meridian. So it's definitely C already the answer. Okay, okay. There's no other option anymore. It's C. Okay, but I will still show you how you get the one five eight. You just take 180 minus 22 because can you see this is a Greenwich Meridian, and from Greenwich Meridian na ke C is the angle here actually, and how to find the angle here is you take 180 minus 22. When you take 180 minus 22, you get 158. It means that from Greenwich Meridian ke kanan 158, that is uh ke kanan 158 yeah. That's why it's east. That's why it's 158 east. It means the longitude here will be 158 east. So the answer is C. 19, express blah 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 as a single fraction in its simplest form. Kalau saya, uh, saya akan terus potong sini. So, dia akan tinggal dengan apa? 2PQ over R. Alright? Times with, and the RS plus RQ, I will terus, hmm, I will terus factorize. Okay, I will terus factorize. How to factorize? Keluarkan R. Tinggal dengan S tambah Q. And then for the 3PQ, okay, 3PQ tak boleh buat apa lah. Just leave it. Alright? And then what you do? R dengan R potong PQ dengan PQ potong So tinggal dengan apa? Tinggal dengan Atas darab atas Bawah darab bawah So atas darab atas 2 times S plus Q So 2 bracket S plus Q Bawah Bawah tinggal 3 saja. So the answer is B Next 20 simplify blah 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 Alright Eh I hope none of, When you do 19 ah, I hope none of you go and How to say Samakan pembawa Like Oh like Eh no 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 no. Kalau darab Kalau darab Tak payah samakan pembawa bro Plus minus saja. Ah, yang ni kena samakan bawah. Ah, this one you have to samakan the denominator. Kalau darab tambah tak payah. Just atas darab atas bawah darab bawah saja. Okay. But I buat. But I suka macam mana? I suka potong first and then baru I atas darab atas bawah darab bawah. But if you want to darab atas dulu and then darab first baru you want to potong can also. Okay. But the number will become like quite big lah and it will be quite how to say. Yeah, can also lah actually can also. Okay. But usually I prefer like how to say. Potong supaya dia yang boleh factorize factorize yang boleh potong potong dulu baru saya darab and then when I darab it will come nicely together and I will I will get the answer right away. But if you want to darab first baru potong can also okay alright twenty. Yang ini awak tak boleh how to say because it's minus so you actually have to samakan bawah so sini tak ada benda means oh one you have to times eight r and atas kena darab benda yang sama so five times eight r is forty r and then one times eight r is eight r minus with six r minus one over eight r. Can you see over 8R, over 8R, I can actually combine it. So it becomes what? 40R minus bracket 6R minus 1. The bracket, if you tak tulis, salah. Confirm salah. If you, if you don't open the bracket, you will be wrong. Why? Because when you open the bracket, you become negative 6R plus 1. That is why the bracket is always important. The bracket makes a huge difference. So please make sure you you got put the bracket. 40R minus 6R is like 32. Uh, 34. Sorry. 40 minus 6 is 34. Sorry. 34R and then plus 1 and then over 8R. So that's the answer. So the answer is A. Alright? I hope none of you go and tell me, oh, the R and R boleh potong. No, no, no. There's no such thing. Okay? Ini benda basic saja. R and R, dia ni satu, how to say, dia ni plus minus. So you cannot potong already. Okay? Yang ni boleh. Yang ni kenapa boleh? Sebab hubungan dia darab. It's like, how to say, if, kalau luar, Ya, yeah, kalau darab, then boleh potong. Like this one, like this one. Right? 2 darab P darab Q over 2 darab R, then boleh potong. Right? 4 dengan 2 boleh potong. But this one is like 34 R plus 1. So, this is actually, how to say, one fa satu family already. So, you cannot kacau dah. Right? Because it's already like together. So, yep. That's how we do it. Okay, let's move on. 21. A plus 2B square minus A square minus B square. Uh, lama. This one just explain lah. So, square depan dulu A square. And then ambil depan darab belakang darab 2. A times 2B is 2AB times 2 is 4AB. And then the last step is just square belakang. 2B square is 4B square. 
minus bracket a square minus b square. Bracket tu kalau tak tulis salah juga. I I okay. I already emphasize a lot of times already. The bracket makes a huge difference. Okay, because once you open the bracket, look what happened. Negative a square minus minus plus b square. Okay, and then a square minus a square is zero. Alright. And then uh, 4b square plus b square is 5b square. And then tinggal dengan 4ab. So this will be the final answer. So the answer is b. Alright. 22. Given that blah blah blah. Okay. Express r in terms of b means find r. Lah. How to find r? First of all, there's fraction. And I hate fraction. But let's take it slow. Because look at the right hand side. You can expand. So let's try to expand first. And then baru can hilangkan fraction. So p minus 5r square over 3. How to expand this? 4 times 3p. 12p. 4 times negative 2, negative 8. And now you can hilangkan the fraction, just pindah jadi darab. So, P minus 5 R square, darab 3, 36 P. Darab 3, 24. And now, don't forget, soalan nak cari R. So, kalau nak cari R, means the negative 5 R square, I have to leave here, and the P, I have to move it over, move it to the other side. What is 36 P plus, jadi minus lah. 36 minus P, 35, minus 24. But I want R only. So, I should, I should move the negative also. So, when I move the neg negative, if you tackle confused, don't don't pin out the negative five lah. Just pin out the negative first, okay? Okay, I'll I'll do it step by step lah. Okay, so what you do is you pin out the the negative first. You don't pin out the five first. So when you pin out the negative, it becomes what negative thirty five p and then negative it becomes plus twenty four. And then baru you pin out the five. Says so robot sangat slow lah. Okay, says so robot sangat slow. So negative thirty five p plus twenty four over five. Alright, and then last step, just pin out the square, the square root. So square root what? Negative 35p plus 24 or 5. But, siapa dapat square root 2? Semua, semua dapat square root. Everything, everything has to dapat square root. Because, the square datang lambat. So, kalau datang lambat, you have to trace dekat luar. So, semua dapat. And atas will be negative 35p plus 24. But, boleh tak kalau 24 tu saya nak tulis depan? Boleh kan? So, tulis depan boleh. So, dia akan jadi 24 minus 35p over 5. So, the answer is A or B? A, right? Yeah, A. 24 minus 35, P or 5. Yeah, the answer would be A. Next, 23. 2 power 7 and then cube root. You know, kalau square root is power 1 over 2. Kalau cube root is power 1 over 3. So it's like 2 power 7, power 1 over 3. So the answer is 2 power 7 over 3. Okay, because 7 times 1 over 3, 7 over 3. So the answer is D. Alright, nothing special. Okay, number 24. Simplify, blah, 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 blah. Okay, I think they have to tinggal the bracket here lah. Okay, okay, you just tambah yourself. Alright, so macam mana nak buat? First of all, kalau ada bracket 1 over 3 means everything inside the bracket you have to power 1 over 3. And I just told you what is power 1 over 3. Power 1 over 3 is cube root. Okay? So, P power 3 darab dengan... Okay, 64 is inside the bracket. And outside the bracket, the other power 1 over 3 means 64 I have to power 1 over 3. So, what is 64 power 1 over 3? 64 power 1 over 3 means cube root 64. Cube root 64 is 4, by the way. Okay? So, you can use your calculator. Cube root 64. And you will really get 4. See? Alright? Next... What is P power 3 power 1 over 3? P power 1 over 3, 1 over 3 is actually like this, right? And the power you have to times. Okay, and the 3 and 3 potong is actually just P power 1 over R power negative 4. Okay, next. 4, what is... Okay, P power 3... Okay, the 4 I can write first. Okay, and the P power 3 times... Sini sudah potong lah. It's just P power 1 only. So what is P power 3 times P power 1? So kalau base sama darab, the power we have to plus... If the base is the same times the power of the plus, so what is p power 3 times p power 1? It will be p power 3 plus 1. So it will be p power 4. And the r power negative 4, I will naik kan. Why? Because look at the option. There is no fraction. So the r power negative 4, bila dia naik, dia akan jadi apa? r power 4. Atas ke bawah, bawah ke atas, base dia akan tetap sama. Cuma kuasa saja yang akan berubah tanda. Cuma the power only, they will change sign. So it will be 4 p power 4, r power 4. So the answer is b. Right? The answer is b, boy. Okay? Number 25, list all the integer. I think they also tertinggal a bracket here. So, you just tambah yourself. So, this one actually, we already did it before. And I already teach you how to separate this into two different inequality. So, dia bagi apa? 2 minus x is... Dia bagi symbol like smaller, smaller. It means in between lah. It means 2 minus x has to be bigger than this, but smaller than this. So, in between. That's why. So, it will be what? How to divide this into two different inequality. I already teach you. like Because I, I, I still remember, like we did this question in the previous paper okay i forgot this set lah i think it's the i think it's the perle set i think yeah but we already did it before lah okay so how to how to separate 2 minus x bigger than 1 over 2 bracket x minus 2 this is the first inequality and the, the other one will be 
2 minus x smaller than 4 bracket 3 plus x. Okay, I know some of you will, will get confused one for this symbol, right? Because here it's smaller, but I write bigger, right? It's because uh, the ad, if you've got confused, just look at where is the arrow. The arrow is pointing towards 1 over 2x minus 2, right? So yeah, the arrow should point towards here. Okay, because it's like this. If you take out from this, this direction is like 2 minus x, this is the minimum value. And this is the maximum value. That's why 2 minus x is in between. It means 2 minus x has to be bigger than this. La. 2 minus x has to be bigger than this. But smaller than this. Alright? Okay. I hope you, you understand la, why is it like the smaller here, I write bigger here. Okay? It's because you tabalate already. Right? You tabalate can these two position already. Because this one, you write the 2 minus x at the right hand side. But this one, you are writing it at the left hand side. So, that's why the, 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 the sign also, you have tabalate can. Okay. Macam mana nak cari x? Expand dulu. Expand dulu. So, 1 or 2x... And then, darab masuk 1 over 2 times negative 2 is just negative 1. What is negative 1x minus 1 over 2x? So, 1 over 2x will be jadi minus. Lah. So, negative 1 minus 1 over 2 is negative 3 over 2x. And then, what is negative 1 plus 2 will jadi minus. So, what's negative 1 minus 2? Negative 3. And the symbol is still bigger than equal. So, boleh lah cari x. So, bahagi 2 jadi darab 2. Darab 3 jadi bahagi 3. So, 3 times 2. Divide 2 jadi times 2. Lah. So, 3 times 2 is 6. And then, 6 divide 3 is 2. And don't forget... You are dividing by a negative value. So, the bigger jadi smaller than. Negative 2 hilang lah. Because negative 3 divided negative is already positive. And please be careful of the sign ah. You have to change from bigger to smaller. Because when you divide by negative value, sign 2 kena terbalik. So, x has to be smaller than or equals to 2. So, the answer B confirms salah. C also confirms salah. Because you know why? Because the, it already says here that the maximum value should be 2. Uh, yeah. Maksudnya, yeah. Smaller than or equals to 2. It means 2, 1, 0 and so on. So the maximum should be 2. So B and C should be wrong already. Okay, what about here? 2 minus X. Smaller than expand. So 4 times 3 is 12. 4 times X is 4X. So how to find X? Negative X. Okay, plus 4X pindah jadi minus 4. So what is negative 1X minus 4X? Negative 5X. And then the 2 move it to the other side. Plus 2 jadi minus 2. What's 12 minus 2? 10. So smaller, sini smaller juga. So X will be 10 divided by negative 5. 10 divided negative 5 is negative 2. And the smaller here, I have to change to bigger. Why? Because same reason. Because you are dividing by a negative value. So X has to be bigger than negative 2. So A or D is the answer. A lah. Negative 2 cannot include because there's no line here. So the answer is A. Why not D? Because D, they, they include the negative 2 already. But look look carefully. X has to be bigger than negative 2. Dia tak ada line dekat bawah. Maksudnya, the minimum value... It's negative 1. Alright? It has to start from negative 1. Yang ini lain. Yang ini kena include. Sebab dia ada line bawah. That's why 2 have to include. Okay? Alright, 26. Which of the following number line is the solution for this inequality? So, I will do it here lah. I, I, I will just do it here. 1 minus 3x. Okay, what's the solution? 1 minus 3x. Smaller than or equal 7. Smaller than or equal 7. So, just solve it. 1 minus 3x. Okay, plus 1 jadi minus 1. So, here it's 6. So, x will be 6 divided negative 3 is negative 2. But this is smaller, but you have to change to bigger. Why? Because you divide by a negative value. Okay? If you still don't know this thing, uh, you you have to know. Lah. You have to know. Okay? When you, whenever you divide by negative, you always have to change. Because this is very important. Okay? It's very important. Okay? Especially in the SPM. Okay? Very important concept. Okay? So you really need to know when you divide negative, you have to change the sign. So X bigger than or equal negative 2. So A, B, C, D, which one, which one would be the answer? So let me erase this. But benda ni sangat kacau. Okay. Let's let's look at A. A is what? X smaller than negative 2. So A is wrong. Okay. Smaller right? Because to the left. Alright. Okay. What about B? B will be X smaller than or equal negative 2. Okay. What's the difference between A and B? Nampak tak? Ini dia bulat saja. Yang ini dia bulat and then dia ada dot. Dia ada dot macam ni. Dot. So kalau dia ada dot means negative 2 included. Maksudnya ada line bawah. So B is the answer. Oh no no no. B is also wrong right? Because... I, it should be bigger than. So, B is also wrong. What about C? C is actually X bigger than negative 2. Dia tak ada dot kan? Tak ada dot means tak payah tambah line. It means that negative 2 is not included. It means you start from negative 1. So, which is also wrong because I know negative 2 is included. Okay? Okay, so the answer is automatically automatic D already. So, X is what? Bigger than or equals negative 2 because the other dot. Maksudnya, negative 2 included. Okay? So, the other dot macam tu. So, the answer is D. Alright? Next is number 27. So, 
Diagram 11 is an OGIF showing the age distribution of 40 competitors. 40 is the total frequency, la, right? Total frequency. Determine the integrata range. What's integrata range? Formula Q3 minus Q1. So, you know, kalau dia bagi OGIF, actually, if you want to find the Q1, Q3, you tapai susah susah. Just, how to say, just take the total frequency 40 times 1 over 4, and then find out where is it, and then tarik, tarik. Okay? And then 40 times 3 over 4, find out what is it, and then tarik, tarik. That's all. Okay, so this will be the Q1. This will be the Q3. What's 40 times 1 over 4? 10. What's 40 times 3 over 4? 30. So 10, use a ruler. Sambung. Sambung. So this will be the Q1. La. So the Q1 will be 39.5. And then what will be the Q3? Sambung. Use a ruler. La. Don't be like me. Okay. And then Sambung. So it will be 44.5 and 49.5 midpoint. It will be the midpoint of 44.5 and 49.5. So how to find the midpoint? Just add and divide by 2. Because it's like exactly in the middle, right? So it's like exactly tengah tengah. So divide by two. So forty seven is actually the Q three. So what is forty seven minus thirty nine point five? Because I want integrata range, ah. Huh? So you have to take Q three, which is forty seven, and then minus with the Q one, which is thirty nine point five. So the answer is A seven point five. All right. Twenty eight diagram twelve point one below is a pictogram that shows the number of visitors to the zoo on Thursday and Saturday. All right. So Thursday and Saturday. And then the number of visitors to the zoo on Friday and Sunday are not shown. So yang Friday, Sunday is not shown. And they say like satu symbol macam ni is represent 100 visitors. So Thursday, how many visitors? 200. Sabtu berapa? Saturday, how many visitors? So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So there is 8, how to say, 8 symbol, right? 8 symbol like this. And one symbol represents 100. So it will be 800 visitors here. Alright? And if you keep... Uh, keep reading. Uh, they give you. Uh, uh, they they still got give you. They will give you more information. So they say Thursday is actually twenty four degree, twenty four degree. Okay, if if you want to put it in a pie chart lah. Okay, a total of three thousand visitors went to the zoo over four days. Rupa rupanya jumlah semua is three thousand. It means two hundred plus eight hundred plus number here plus number here is three thousand. But we don't know how many visitors on Friday and Saturday, Sunday yet. So, tak apa, let's keep reading first. The number of visitors on Sunday was twice the number of visitors on Saturday. Okay, number of visitors on Sunday, which is here, will be twice the number on Saturday. Saturday, berapa visitors? 800. So, twice means 800 times 2, which is 1,600. It means Sunday will be 1,600 visit visitors. Okay, and then what else? According to diagram 12.2, find the value of angle on Friday. Bukanya find number of visit visitors on Friday. Eh? Find, num find angle. Okay, first of all, can you find the number of visitors on Friday? Yes, because the total is 3,000. Boleh lah ambil 3,000, tola, tola, tola. So, jadi apa? 3,000 minus 200 minus 1,600 and then minus 800. So, the answer is 400. So, now we already know all the number... Of, how to say? I already know number of vi visitors for for Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. But... The answer they want, what they want is they want you to find the value of angle on Friday. So this is not angle. This is number of visitors. So try to imagine. Thursday they give you twenty four degree, and twenty four degree is actually equivalent to Thursday, which is two hundred visitors. But now they want you to find four hundred visitors. Rapper angle here. Ha 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 ha. Macam mana? Macam mana? Ting ting ting. Twenty four degree is equivalent to two hundred visitors. So kalau four hundred visitors, ha rapper. Macam mana saya nak cari? Because you want to convert it back to angle tau. So, kalau 24 degree is equivalent to 200 visitors. Okay, maksudnya 200 ni, kalau nak convert jadi angle is 24 degree. So, kalau 400, berapa? Berapa? Okay, from 200 to 400, second and darab 2 kan? So, sini times 2 also. So, what's 24 times 2? 48. Right? So, that's the answer. I know for this type of question, sebenarnya ada banyak cara. Right? Like some of you, maybe you will use fraction lah. How to say? Like something over something. Or maybe some of you would take the 3000 and jadikan dia 360 degree. And then cari 1 degree, divide 360. Can, can, can. Semua, semua cara ni boleh. Alright? This sebenarnya ada banyak cara. But this is how I would do it. Okay? This is how I would do it and this is how I would explain it. Okay? If you have any other method that you think is like more suitable for you, like, like, how to say, it's more, much more easier to understand, then go ahead. Okay? Go ahead. Okay? Just make sure you get the same answer. Okay? If you get the same answer in the end, then the, it means your method is probably correct. Okay? So, yeah. 
number 29 here. Diagram 13 is an incomplete pictograph. Okay, it's incomplete because, yeah, I can see January and March, they're blank, right? They're empty. It's empty. Okay, showing number of motorcycles produced by a factory. The number of motorcycles produced in January and March is not shown. All right, January, March, not shown. But February is shown. So, the other tiger, how to say, three, like, three, three motorcycles here. But, you know, one motorcycle is represent 35 unit. So, actually, you have to take 35 times three. La. So, it's actually what? Uh, 105. It means, in February, how many motorcycles sold? 105 motorcycle is sold. A total of 455 were produced in those three months. Rupert Rupert, the sum is 455. Eh, soalan ni soalan 28 kan? It's like similar, right? Similar. Like they give you one and then give you total. Alright, let's keep reading. The number of motorcycles produced in January is four times. Okay, number of January is four times. The number of motorcycles produced in March. So, boleh tak kalau saya for March, I jadikan the number of motorcycles sold in March, jadikan X. So, berapa, berapa motorcycle sold in January? It will be 4 times, right? So, 4x ah, right? So, how many motorcycles were produced in January? Hey, you already know the total is 455. So, boleh lah saya cari x, betul? Because I know 4x tambah dengan 105 tambah dengan x equals to 455. And I can actually find x. 4x plus x is 5x. What's 455 minus 105? So, it's 350. But you have to divide by 5. So, it's 70, right? So, 70. But you don't go and bulatkan A and tell me the answer is A. Hello. Read carefully. Read carefully. Please, look at the question. Okay? How many motorcycles were produced by January, bro? Kalau you bulat A, salah lah. Because January is 4 kali ganda X. 4 darab X. So, it's actually 4 times 70, which is 280. It means that the 70 is just number of motorcycles sold in March. That is not what the question asks. The question asks for January. So you have to take 4 times 70. That is why the answer is not A. The answer is D. Next, number 30. Diagram 14 shows a graph of function. This is obviously a cubic graph, right? A cubic graph. And then which of the following is the equation of graph function? Sudah ajar berapa kali? Like, sudah, repeat, sudah ulang berapa kali? Berapa kali dia mau tanya? Okay? Berapa kali dia mau tanya soalan yang sama? Like, they are just recycling the question at this point. Like, how many times... I already explained this thing about the positive zone and the negative zone. Okay? If you got watched my previous video, I'm sure you already know. Right? You already know what I will say. You already know how I will explain it. You already know what, what diagram I will draw to explain it. Right? Because it's the same thing over and over and over and over again. It's just, they're just repeating the same thing at this point. So, which one would be the equation for it? So, we know the y-intercept is 3. So, A salah, B salah. Because if the y-intercept is 3, it means when x equals 0, y equals 3. Okay, when x equals 0, y equals 3. So if you look at a, tak boleh lah. Because a, when x equals 0, y is negative 3. That's why a salah. C also salah. Because if you substitute x 0, you dapat y is negative 3. That's why salah. But b and c is possible. So what is the difference between a and b? In, so in b, dia punya coefficient of x power 3 is positive. But in D, the coefficient of x power 3 is negative. So, positive or negative? I already explained it. This is the positive zone. So, the answer will be B. So, about sini, sini kosong. Atas sini positive value. So, positive value, positive value. When positive meet with positive, it will be the positive zone. And here will be negative value. Here will be negative value. So, negative, bila jumpa dengan negative, dia akan jadi positive. That's why the pos this is the positive zone. The negative zone will be here. Okay? You can also use this technique. Uh, I mean, use this, how to say Guna cara ni untuk uh, differentiate the reciprocal. Reciprocal is also like this, right? So, which one is positive, which one is negative? Yang ni positive or negative? This one is positive or negative? Okay, you know reciprocal is y equals k over x, right? Okay, this is the equation. So, when k is positive, it will look like this. When k is negative, it will look like this. Okay, sama. Cara untuk beza yang ni dengan cara untuk beza cubic graph sama. Just look at where, okay? Remember, I already show you how how, how I remember. Okay, this is how I remember. Lah. But of course, if you have your own way of remembering, then, okay, go ahead. But this is how I remember, okay? I always remember, like, when positive value meet with positive value, that would be the positive zone, right? When negative meet with negative, 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 jadi positive. So, this would be the po positive zone also, right? So, you just look at the, look at the, how to say, the end, Okay, the hujung, hujung line too. Okay, since I already repeat it so many times, I, I, I will not go into details anymore. If you want to know, just go go to the previous set, okay? And watch, watch the explanation for that. Okay, so number 31, given that the universal set, blah, 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 1 to 15. Hey, is 1 and 15 included? 
Is 1 and 15 included? No, uh, no, 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 no. Only 1 included. Okay, only 1 included. It will be universal set. It will be 1, 2, 3, 4, Okay, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Okay, why fifteen? I didn't include fifteen because there are other lines in it. But one I have to include because one the other like line powers in it. Alright, set M is a prime number. Uh, I hope you all know what is prime number. <laughs> okay, one is not prime number. So two, three, five, seven, nine is not eleven, thirteen. Okay, I won't explain anymore what is prime number, okay? If you don't know, then... Okay, prime number are numbers that can only be divided by itself and numbers that can only divide by 1, alright? So, yeah, that's the definition of prime number. Alright, find M complement. M complement means what? Everything except M. Everything except 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13. So, everything except 2, 3, 5 would be 1, 4, 5 cannot, 6... 7 double A. Because already said M complement means except 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13. So, except 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, and 13. So, this will be the answer. The one I bullet. 1, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, 12, 14. So, A, B, C, D. 1, 4. So, B. Okay, B or D? B, yeah. B. B, yeah. Why D cannot? Because D, the other 15 tau. And 15 mana other. Okay. Tak ada 15. Tak boleh ada 15 pun. Because it here already said 15 cannot be included. Alright, so let's continue. Let's move on. Diagram 15 is a when diagram which shows the element of PQR. If the universal set is blah blah blah, what is the element of blah blah blah? <laughs> okay, so the other bracket. So second part and bracket dulu. So what's P complement? Everything except P. So E, F, G, H. Any P complement. And then union R. Union R means what? Ambit R. So ambit, ambit D. Lah. And then bracket complement means everything except this. It means that I have to erase all the one yang I mentioned and bulatkan like the... How to say everything except the one yang I just put like just now. So which is A, B, and C. And then intersect with Q complement. Q complement, Q is the box here. And Q complement will only be A and B. So I have to erase this. So the answer will be B. Okay. Okay. I know some of you is like, don't even understand, right? Like, apa you bought, Junhao? It's too fast. Like, you explain it too fast. I don't know what you're doing. Okay, tapa, you can use the, how to say, the, the method that I, that I show in class. Okay. Okay. Macam mana saya ajar dalam class? So draw a diagram and then, Oh no. <laughs> uh, like this. Alright, okay. Macam ni. But you have to look this again. Okay, why again? Sebab, yeah. Sebab dia ada, how to say, dia ada two, you have to do two operation. Okay, dia ada dua operation. That's why you have to, the first one for the first operation and then the second diagram for the second operation. So, yang mana P? Bulat. Yang bulat. Bullet is P and then Q is the rectangle, R is the triangle. Here will be same also. Alright. P complement is what? Everything except P. Okay, Lorik kan? Everything except P, except P, except P. Sini pun tak boleh ya? Because sini is dalam P, right? And then, R, R. The the symbol ignore first, right? Do you remember last year we learned? I, I, I said the symbol you tengok last, right? So, tengok R. R mana? R is the triangle, right? So, just now, tadi you shape macam tu. Sekarang you shape like opposite direction. So that you can see dekat mana dia intersect. Okay, macam ni. And then look at, sekarang baru tengok simbol. Okay, simbol dia apa? Union. Apa apa union? Union means, yang ada lorik sekali kena ambil, yang lorik sekali kena ambil, yang lorik dua kali pun kena ambil. It means that, ada lorik, ambil. But for intersect, you only ambil yang lorik dua kali saja. So, sekarang dia nak union kan. Maksudnya, semua benda yang saya lorik, kena ambil. So, sini kena, sini ambil, sini ambil, sini, sini ambil. Alright? Tapi, tengok, dia kata bracket complement tau. It means that, Everything except, everything except P complement union R. Boleh faham maksud saya? Everything except P union. Maksudnya, saya tak boleh lorikkan sini. Saya kena lorikkan sini, sini, sini. Not even here. Not even the small part here. Because, I already say everything except the the shaded the, the shaded here. So, it will be like this. Ha, macam ni. Okay, kenapa saya kena transfer, transfer to a new diagram? Sebab saya belum siap lagi. That is why I draw two diagram. Eh? Because I belum siap lagi. Saya kena buat intersect Q complement. But don't look at the intersect first. The symbol you tengok last. Lorekkan dulu. So Q complement means what? Everything except Q. So can you see Q is a rectangle? So everything except Q means what? You have to shade outside of the Q lah. Outside, outside of the rectangle. So it will be here lah. 
Okay, just now you shape like this. Now you have to shape. Like how to say, berlawanan lah. Supaya you boleh nampak mana dia, dekat mana zone yang ada dua kali shaded and dekat mana ada satu kali shaded. And not even here ah, not even inside you cannot shade because the the triangle is inside Q, so you cannot shade here also. So that's all. Now baru you tengok simbol dia. Simbol dia apa? Intersect. Intersect means you choose yang ada shade two two times. Yang sini saja lah. Sini tak boleh. Sini tak boleh. Sini sekali saja shade. Okay. Ah kalau union kena ambil. Kalau union means shade sekali kena ambil, shade dua kali pun kena ambil. Yang ada shade kena ambil. But for intersect, you hanya ambil tempat yang shaded two times means this this here, this shape here. That's why it's just A and B only. Alright? That's why the answer is B. Okay? Number 33. Diagram 16 is a graph of the straight line VW. And then the coordinate of point B is negative 2, 4. Okay, write it down. La. Equation of straight line is a Y equals negative 2. Okay, write it down. La. Which of the following possible coordinates of point W? Sebenarnya ada dua cara. Ada dua cara. Dia nak cari point W kan? Ada dua cara. First method is... Okay, dia bagi... They already give you the equation of straight line. Which is y equals negative 2x. We know that equation of straight line should be y equals mx plus c. It means that dia, this will be the m, right? The gradient will be negative 2. So, cara pertama is you can find gradient. How to find? You take a and then you take negative 4 minus 4 over negative 4 minus negative 2. And then you buat, buat, buat and see whether it's negative 2 or not. And then after you buat, you cuba, you repeat the same step with soalan b, soalan c and soalan d. And then same thing, just take y minus y and x minus y and see which one you get, which one will give you negative 2. Which one will give you negative 2 and that will be the answer. Okay, that will be the answer. Okay, that is the first cara pertama. But another method is you can take y equals negative 2x and you substitute all these points inside and see which one. Because kalau point tu ada passes through, maksudnya left hand side and the right hand side should be equal. Okay, okay, tak apa. I show you one contoh. A, negative 4, negative 4. Maksudkan, masukkan X, negative 4, Y, negative 4 and see whether they are, the left hand side and the right hand side equal or not. So, X is negative 4, right? So, negative 2, X is negative 4 and Y ne is 4, uh, is negative 4. So, see left hand side, right hand side equal or not. So, what's negative 4 times negative 4? 8. So, this is wrong. A is wrong. It means that this straight line will never passes through negative 4, negative 4. Itu maksud dia. Because, kalau dia ada passes through, bila you masuk X and Y, dia sepatutnya sama, both side. Right? That's why A is wrong. So, what about B? Negative 4, negative 2. So, Y equals negative 2X. And the X is negative 4. Y is negative 2. Tolong jangan silap masuk lah. Yang depan is X. So, negative 4 masuk belakang. Neg negative 2 masuk depan. Sebab sini Y kan. So, negative 2 equals to negative 2, negative 4. Uh, positive 8. So, B is also wrong. It means that this straight line will never pass through B. So, B is not your answer. Because if you want to find point W, point W, this line got passes through point W. So, A and B wrong. What about C? 4, negative 3. So, let's try to masuk. Y equals negative 2X. Don't forget, yang depan is X, yang belakang is Y. So, jangan silap masuk. X masuk apa? 4. Y masuk apa? Negative 3. So, dengan jadi apa? Negative 3 equals to negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. So, C salah juga. So, the answer is automatic D already. But, of course, I will show you, okay? I will show you that it's really D. So, D is what? Same, same lah. Masukkan into equation Y equals negative 2X. Don't forget, X nak masuk apa? X nak masuk 4, ah. Huh? Y nak masuk apa? Negative 8. So, it becomes what? Negative 8 equals to negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. So, can you see both sides are the same? It means that so, this garisan other passes through 4, negative 8. So, the answer is D lah. Okay, the answer is D. Okay, just now I did mention about another method, right? Which is by using the gradient. Okay, actually can also. If you test one by one, you will also get the answer is D. So, what is D? The value? 4, negative 8, right? So, let's try and masukkan 4, negative 8 here. And let's try to really take Y minus Y and X minus X and make sure we really get the negative 2. Okay, negative 8 minus 4 over 4 minus negative 2. So, what's the answer? What's 8? Negative 8 minus 4, negative 12. And 4 minus minus, I mean 4 plus 2. So, 4 plus 2 is 6. Negative 12 divided 6 is negative 2. Can you see the gradient is... Yeah, it's negative 2. It's matched with the uh, match with the gradient from the equation. So, yeah, the answer is D. Alright? Okay, number 34. Diagram 17 is a straight line of KL, MN. Given the equation of KL is... Okay, I will just write it. I will just write it. 2x plus 3y minus 6 equals 0. But usually, equation of straight line, we usually write it in y equals mx plus c. So that we can terus nampak apa gradient dia. So what I will do, I will just change it to y equals mx plus c. How to change? Pindah the 2x first, jadi negative 2x. Pindah the negative jadi plus 6. Bahagi 3, bahagi 3. Here also, bahagi 3. 
and we can see the gradient of KL will be negative 2 over 3, and what will be the, the y-intercept? It will be 2, right? Because this is y equals mx plus c. This is the m, and this is the c. So the c is like somewhere here, so I can write 2. Okay? 2 less je, 2 less je. Okay? 2 less je. So let me write it again. 2, and the gradient will be negative 2 over 3. Okay? Okay, the two, the 2 here actually it might be useless, right? Maybe you won't even use this to, to solve the... To, you don't even need this information to, to do this question. But just write it. Just write it. It's okay. Man. Just do this idea. Okay. Okay, write the straight line of MN is... Uh, sorry. While the straight line MN is parallel. Parallel. Parallel with KL. So what is the gradient of MN? Negative 2 or 3 also. La. Negative 2 or 3 also. La. And then passes through 0, 4. Passes through 0, 4. So passes through 0, 4. And then, among the following, which equation is the straight is the straight line mn? So, what is the equation of straight line mn? It will be y equals mx plus c, right? Y equals mx plus c. And you already know the m is negative 2 over 3. And what will be the c? The c will be 4, actually. Okay? Okay, if you don't believe me, you, you just, how to say, plus c, and then passes through 0, 4. Lah. And then, you must look at x, 0, y, 4. Because you already learned this, right? Kalau dia tak bagi c, you must pass through. So, y is 4. And then the x is 0. And you will really get 4. Because 0 times 2 divided by 3 is just 0. So just potong everything. So c is 4. So the answer will be y equals negative 2 over 3x plus 4. Okay, how I know? How I know, like, even before passes through, I already know the answer is 4. Because, uh, look at this point here. 0, 4, it means sini lah. 0, 4. Passes, means this is already the y-intercept. That's how I know that even I don't have to pass through anymore. Like, the y-intercept is automatic 4 already. So this is the answer y equals negative 2 over 3x plus 4. But if you look at ABCD, it's not tada jawapan. Because, you know why? Because the ABCD, they change it to general form already. What's general form? x, y, number, equals 0. Itu general form. But now my answer is in gradient form. So what I need to do is I need to susun supaya dia jadi general form. First of all, hilangkan fraction first. Because I hate fraction. So everything times 3. So times 3, 3y times 3, negative 2x times 3, 12. Okay, now susun. Jadi general form. Negative 2x, saya kena tulis depan dulu. And then 3y, kena tulis 3y. Plus 12, kena pindah jadi minus 12, equals 0. Remember, general form mesti equals 0. So if you look at ABCD, which one match with this? Which one is the answer? C, right? C, C is the one. 2x plus 3y minus 12. Right? So, yeah. That's how you do it. Okay, next question number 36. Right, can you see? It's given that S is blah blah blah. A number is chosen at random. What is the probability that the prime number? Time number from 1 to 10. Which one is prime number? 2, 3, 5, 7. That's all. So 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 over 10. A. Number 36. In a class, 27 pupils like to swim. 27 like to swim. If a pupil is chosen at random, the probability of choosing a pupil who like to swim is 9 over 3. So probability of choosing student that likes to swim is 9 over 13. So, find the total number of students in the class. They say there's 27 that likes to swim. So, 27 over the total should be 9 over 13. Lah. So, how to find the total? Can you see 9 nak jadi 27? 27, uh, 9 nak jadi 27, saya kena darab 3. So, 13 also, I have to darab 3. Lah. So, the answer is 39, which is B. Of course, you want to darab silang can also. Okay? You can also jadikan benda ni X. And then, you want to darab silang also can. Okay? X darab 9, jadi 9X. And then, 13 times 27... Okay, you get like a number 351, and then you take 351, divide 9. Sama je lah. Jawapan dia. Sama je. Alright. Okay, what I do just now is I see that the 9 and 37, they are the connection. They are the connection. Okay, what is the connection? Uh, times 3. That's why I also take bawah times 3. Okay, dapat 39. So, yeah. But if you, but if you want to darab silang, okay, if you feel more comfortable doing it like this, then go ahead, right? It's up to you. Okay, 37. 8 mathematics teacher may build 100... 12 questions of mathematical exam examination within 8 hours. Okay, let's write it down. 8 teachers, uh, it can make 112 questions in 8 hours. In 8 hours, 8 teachers. So, given the time is inversely changed with number of teachers. Okay, this line is very important. Time inversely changed with number of teachers. Apa maksudnya? It means, lebih ramai teachers, lebih si kurang masa. Itu maksudnya, inversely ma, inversely proportional means when the number of teacher increase, the time taken to build the question decrease. Ya lah, if you fikir ada logic, right? Lebih banyak cikgu means lebih pandai. I mean, not lebih pandai lah, but lebih, lebih banyak orang. It means lebih banyak orang means lebih siap lah, kita boleh habis kita punya kerja, betul? 
more teachers, it means less time taken. That's why it says inversely change. Itu maksud dia. Inversely. Okay, kalau directly, okay, kalau directly means, kalau number of teacher increase, the time will also increase. Itu maksudnya directly. But it says inversely. Maksudnya apa? When number of teachers increase, the time taken to make the question decrease. Because more teachers means more people to help. Right? More, you, you get more help. Right? Maksudnya less time taken. So, more teachers, less time. Itu maksudnya. Calculate time required to build 112 questions. If there are five teachers only, so if there's only five teachers and you want to make 112 questions, what will be the, what will be the time taken? Okay, what will be the time taken? Okay, I know some of you will jawab like this. I know some of you will say, oh, kalau eight teachers in eight hours, kalau five teachers in five hours lah. So the answer is A lah. No, no, wrong. Hey, you 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 fikir ah, you fikir. Eight teachers can finish the work in eight hours. If five teacher in five hours, are you sure? Are you, are you are you sure? Are you sure? Because just now they just mentioned already, time is inversely changed with number of teachers. It means the eight teachers here, here, okay, eight to five, eight actually not jadi five. So eight divide five, you have to divide one point six, betul. So if you take eight divide one point six, it's five, but. Yang 8 sini, saya tak boleh bahagi 1.6. I have to darab 1.6. Do you know why? Because it doesn't make any sense, right? 8 teacher can solve it in 8 hours. But if 5 teacher means less teacher. So less teacher, the time should increase. Because they say inversely proportional. Maksudnya, kalau 8 teacher can solve it in 8 hours. Maksudnya 5 teacher, it should lebih lama lah. Because lebih sikit teacher. It means less teacher already. 8 teacher, 5 teacher is lesser. So lesser means the time taken should 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 increase. It's not 8 hours. It will be more than 8 hours. So, the answer cannot be 5 hours. Can you understand? Right? Takkanlah lebih sikit teacher, lebih smaller. No, no, no. It means that you can... The, here, you divide 1.6. Betul lah. 8 divide 1.6. But here, you have to times 1.6. Instead of divide, you have to times. Sebab dia inversely. That's why it's 12.8. So, 12.8 hours. But if you look at the soalan, you actually have to convert jadi hours and minutes. So, 12.8 hours is actually 12 hours... Plus 0 0.8 hours. So it's actually 12 hours. Okay, yang 0 0.8 hours ni dia tak cukup 1 hour lagi. So you have to convert jadi minute. So times 60. So it's 48 minutes. So it's 12 hours, 48 minutes. So the answer is D. Alright, I hope you understand. Let me just explain again so like you understand it even better. Alright. Okay, 8 teachers jadi 5 teacher. So the number of teacher decrease. So the time should increase. Faham ke? Kalau time decrease, here should increase. Because they say inversely. That is why it cannot be 8 teacher, 8 hours, 5 also, 5 hours. Because if here is 5 hours, it means the teacher decrease, the time also decrease. So it's wrong already. That's why you cannot take, it means 8 na jadi 5, you have to divide 1.6. But kalau directly, then here also divide. But since it's inversely, then you have to tabale. It means that you actually have to times, so that the number increase, so that the number gets bigger. Alright, hope you understand. Number 38, which of the following represents Q varies directly as P square? So, Remember lah, when you do variation, it's always the same step, right? What is the step? Ada tiga step kan? First step is tukar the symbol jadi equals and then tambah a constant. Usually, we use K. And then the next step is find K. And then after you find K, you rewrite. Itu je, step dia. Alright, but they ask you which of the following is true, A, B, C or D. Okay, you have to try one by one lah. No choice. So, let's try with A first. A, they say when P is 1, Q is 1. So, masukkan 1 equals to K, 1 square. It means what is your K? 1 also. So, rewrite. So when you rewrite, it becomes what? It becomes, you cannot take out balik sini lah. Q equals KP square. So it becomes Q equals 1P square. Because you already know K is 1, right? So it becomes Q equals to 1P square. And then let's try masukkan yang value 216. Okay? And the left hand side and right hand side should be the same. If not same, then salah already lah. Okay, P is 2, Q is 16. So Q is 16, P is 2. So 16 equals to 2 square. Is it correct? No, because the left hand side and the right hand side is not the same. So A is not the answer. Is salah. What about uh, B? So let's try with B. So same thing lah. Q equals to K P square. And then find K. How to find K? Masukkan P and Q. 1 and 2. So P masukkan 1. Q masukkan 2. So what is the K? 1 square is 1. 2 divided 1 is 2. And then let's try and do the same thing. Try with the next pasangan. And make sure the left hand side and the right hand side is match. So 2 and 4. If you masuk P 2, Q 4. Is it correct? Okay, rewrite first. Rewrite first. Q equals to... 2P squared. Okay, sekarang baru masuk. P2, Q4. So, P is 2. And then Q is 4. So, it'll be what? 2 squared is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 
and then the but the left hand side is four. So the left hand side and right hand side is not the same. So B is wrong, lah. So let's try with C. Okay, if if it's not C, then the answer is D, lah. Okay, okay, let's try with C. So same thing. Q equals to K P square. Oh, but in the park, Okay, Q equals to K. Okay, I I I don't want to write here, lah, because it's very hard to see. I'll, I'll just do it. Uh, okay, where should I write it? Okay, maybe I'll write it here. Okay, Q equals to K P square. Find K, right? Okay, masukkan one and three. P is one, Q is three, so. Q is 3, P is 1. So what is K? Okay, 1 square is still 1 and 3 divided 1 is 3. So K is 3, rewrite, rewrite. Q equals to 3, P square. And what you do is you try with the other point also. Okay, okay, 2, 12. Make sure you really, the left hand side and the right hand side is like, they, they're going to match. Okay, they're going to match. P is 2, 3 is, Q is 12. So 12 equals to 3, P square. P is 2 like this. Okay, 2 square, 4, 4 times 3, 12. Hey, match ah. So, yang ini betul, yang ini betul. But you cannot... Just because two of these betul doesn't mean C is the answer. Because you have to test for semua tau. They can use semua betul baru betul. Maksudnya, 327 you have to test also. So let's try with 327. Okay, I'll just erase this and continue from here. Okay, and continue from here. So Q is 27 and then P is 3. So let's try it. 27. Okay, what's 3 square? Hey, remember, I can buat yang power dulu. Baru boleh darab. You, you tak boleh darab dulu. You have to buat, buat the power first. Okay, 3 square is 9. 9 times 3, 27. Oh, betul juga. Match also, left hand side, right hand side. So, yeah, this is correct. Okay, what about the last one? 4 and 48. So, let's erase. If this one also betul, then, then C is the answer. Alright, so Q will be what? Q will be 48. And then 3 P squared. So, P is 4. So, 4 times 4 squared is 16. 16 times 3 is 48. Oh, match lah. Left hand side and right hand side match. So, betul semua. So, the answer is C. Alright, okay. Hope you understand. 39. Given that blah blah blah, find value of P. Okay, any matrix. So, macam mana nak buat? So, this is a 2 row 2 column, 2 row 2 column. So when you darab, you get a 2 row 2 column. But, nampak tak ada number depan sini. So actually, you have to darab the 2 inside first. And you have to darab all numbers time, times 2. So it becomes what? 2 times 4, 8. 2 times 3, 6. 2 times 1, 2. 2 times 2, 4. And then, baru darab dengan 1, negative 2, negative 5, 5. Equals to this thing here. But, this thing here, tak apa. Nanti kita, how to say, nanti kita compare. Kita buat sendiri dulu. We do it by ourselves and multiply and get my our own answer and then we call, we compare with the answer yang soalan bagi so let's do it ourselves macam mana nak darab horizontal darab vertical so 8 times 1 and then 6 times negative 5 which is negative 30 dah so first row first column and then first row second column so 8 times negative 2 so i write down i write it at the first row second column so negative 16 and then 6 times 5 which is 30 kalau tengah-tengah tak ada symbol means plus all right next Second row, first column. So, 2 times 1 is 2. 4 times negative 5 is negative 20. And then next will be second row, second column. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. 4 times 5 is 20. Tengah-tengah plus. So, the answer will be what? 8 minus 30 is negative 22. 30 minus 16 is 14. 2 minus 20 is negative 18. And then here will be 16. Alright? So, now you can compare, right? Okay. Can you see it? Okay. You compare with here, right? Here, ah. Huh? So negative 22 compared with negative 22, 14 is 14, 16 is 16. So P is negative 18. You just compare here with here. Right? So atas and number 1. So P is automatic negative 18 already. So the answer is D. Alright? Okay, the last one. Find the product of this and this. Uh, the answer is A. Okay, the answer is A. Okay, let me explain. Because the 1001 1 is called identity matrix. And let me tell you what is identity matrix. Identity matrix means when you take a matrix darab dengan inverse dia, Okay, they can dapat 1001. So, for example, if I give you a matrix A, matrix A, right, and, and I darab dengan A inverse, they can dapat balik 1001. So, can I ask you, what happens if I take, what happens if I take the A inverse and I move it to the other side? So, it will become 1001. A inverse, bila dia move to the other side kan, dia akan jadi A saja. Maksudnya apa? Maksudnya, bila saya ambil A darab dengan 1001, I would get A. Ini maksud dia. I repeat again. Awak kena ingat dua, two things. In matrix, ah, there is two things is very important that you need to know. In paper 2 also, you need this information. You need this. You need this knowledge. Or else, in paper 2, you will suffer also. Because this thing is very important, this concept. Okay, I will repeat again. These two things. First thing, when a matrix darab dengan inverse dia, you will get 1001. Second thing, when matrix darab dengan 1001, nothing will change. It will get back itself. Because, 
Because from actually the second formula comes from the first formula. Just imagine a darab a inverse is one zero zero one. Maksudnya the a inverse boleh lah saya pindah to the other side jadi darab. Uh, not not to say darab lah, but since because in uh in uh, how to say in matrix ah, dia tak ada bahagi tau. So it's just that a inverse dipindah jadi a a normal. Okay, so a inverse jadi a normal. That's why a darab When you take any matrix, any two row two column matrix, darab dengan one zero zero one, you dapat balik sendiri. Itu maksudnya. That is why three negative six negative nine twelve darab dengan one zero zero one. Actually, you will get back the same three negative six negative nine twelve. This is the answer. Okay, this is the answer. So the answer is A because if you check three times one three three times negative two negative six three times negative three negative nine three times four twelve. But if you try with B C and D, you will not get back this. That's why the answer is A. But maybe some of you. You don't believe me. If you don't believe me, just take horizontal times vertical, horizontal times vertical. You get the same answer, right? Okay, let's just let's just do it quickly here. Okay, actually you don't have to do it. Okay, I just do it because I want you to understand it. Okay, okay, horizontal times vertical. If you, if if you want to do it slowly lah. Okay, okay. So horizontal first row first column. So three times one, three negative six times zero zero. Tengah tengah dia plus. First row second column three times zero zero negative six times one negative six. Okay, what about second row, first column? Negative nine times one, negative nine. Negative nine times zero, zero. Tengah tengah tak ada benda means plus. Negative nine times zero, zero. Twelve times one, twelve. Tengah tengah dia plus. So what you get? Three, negative six, negative nine, twelve. Nampak tak? It's exactly the same with what I start with. Three, negative six, negative twelve, which is what I write here. Okay. So remember, when you see any matrix darab dengan identity ataupun darab dengan one zero zero one, it means that they darab balik sendiri. Okay, but if you're not sure, if you're not confident, then you just darab macam biasa like this lah. Okay, and you will really get back. Okay, you will really get back the original Christian. Alright. So, that's all. Hope you understand. Hope you learn something. Alright. Okay, actually there is one more set. Huh? There's one more set. Okay, and that will be the last set. Alright. So, yep. Hopefully you got watch till the end and you got learn something lah. Alright.